Hello viewers, as you probably know, every car has a battery which serves as a source of electricity for things like starter motor, headlights and so on. If it's bad and doesn't hold the charge, you'll probably have trouble starting the car or its electrics might start acting up. But before hastily replacing the battery, just to be on the safe side, it would be a good idea to check and test it first. This can be done using several methods and we'll go through most of them right now. Obviously, to check the battery, you'll first have to find it. In most cases, this will be somewhere under the hood, inside the engine bay, just like here. Sometimes, though, there will be a protective plastic or fabric cover over the battery, making it less straightforward to spot. If you can't find it anywhere under the hood, take a look inside the trunk, underneath the floor panel or inside these side compartments. Lastly, some cars have a battery under the seats, either front or rear ones, or hidden somewhere deep inside the fenders or wheel wells. Anyways, if you're having trouble finding the battery in your own car, check the owner's manual or leave the question in the comments box below. I'm sure someone will come up with an answer. So, having found the battery, you can now check it visually and, depending on the available tools, carry out several tests to assess its condition. The first thing that can be seen straight away is the battery terminals, which shouldn't have any traces of corrosions on them. This white-green powder-like substance will form as a result of acid evaporation and, if substantial enough, might prevent current flow from the battery to the rest of the car. Luckily, as I'll show later in this video, this problem can be easily solved by simply cleaning off the corrosion buildups. While working around the battery, you might as well check its overall condition, as this will reveal any cracks or bulges on the casing. If you notice any doming, this usually indicates overcharging caused by a defective alternator. Next, inspect the battery terminals and look at the insulation. If the battery has cracks, you must replace it. Also, if dealing with a flooded type battery, you should check the acid level in each compartment and top it up with distilled water if needed. If I'm honest, checking the battery just by looking at it will not always do the trick. This is when you'll want to use some tools, among which the multimeter is my favorite and something I'd recommend to every car enthusiast. It can be used to measure all sorts of things, like voltage or resistance, making it crucial for troubleshooting and repairs. In this case, we'll set the rotary knob to voltage, as this is what we want to check. Now, with the car still turned off, connect the tester probes to the battery's positive and negative terminals, and then check the readings. If the battery is in good condition, you should see approximately 12 and a half volts here, while anything below 12 volts means there isn't enough charge in the battery. But even if that's the case, don't rush to replace it just yet. Instead, start the car and then redo the test once more. With the engine running at idle, the readings should show around 14 volts, which is how much a good alternator puts out. Anything considerably more or less indicates a charging problem that needs to be addressed ASAP. But what if both the battery and alternator voltages are ok, yet the battery still keeps going flat after the car is left parked for a day or two? Well, in that case, we'll have to do a parasitic drain test, which should reveal if any device is using more electricity than it should. This is done by disconnecting the negative battery lead and hooking up the multimeter in line. Make sure everything in the car, lights, radio and so on, is turned off, switch to amps using a rotary knob and check the readings. If this is more than 50 or 100 milliamps, then something is draining the battery. To figure out what, locate the fuse box and start pulling out the fuses, one by one, until the amperage drops. When this happens, you have found the culprit. Apart from the multimeter, several other tools can be used to test the battery and its charge level. One of them is a car battery tester, a device designed for this purpose exactly. It will allow you to see if the battery holds sufficient voltage when put under load, which is essential when cranking the car for a long time. You can also use a power probe, which you'll tap against the battery's positive terminal to get a reading. 
This is quite similar to a multimeter, but limited to measuring voltage only. Other available tools include an ammeter, which measures the incoming and outgoing charge of the battery, and the hydrometer, with which you can check the degree of acidity inside the battery. But if none of these tools, a multimeter or anything else, are available, you might try doing the headlight test, which could reveal whether the battery is bad. First, turn them on while the car is not running. If you notice they aren't as bright as usual, the car battery may be low. This is even more true if they become much brighter after starting the engine and the alternator starts charging everything up. On the other hand, if the headlights seem equally bright when you turn the car up, the battery is probably in good condition. As said, issues with the battery are often caused by corrosion buildups on their terminals, which can easily be solved by simple cleaning. And here's how's that done. For a start, hook up the car to the battery charger. This will prevent your stereo and other electrics from losing all their settings once the battery is disconnected. Then use a suitable wrench or socket to undo the battery clamps and disconnect the cables from the battery. Make sure to remove the negative cable first while doing this. Next, make a thick, paste-like mixture of baking soda and warm water. Apply it on terminals and clamps and leave it like that for several minutes. Now wash off the paste and the corrosion it dissolved with water and a toothbrush. For the best results, brush off any remaining rust or buildups with a wire brush or sanding paper. To prevent battery corrosion in the future, apply a thin layer of dielectric grease on both battery terminals. Finally, reconnect the battery cables, with the positive one done first, and firmly tighten the clamps. If cleaning off the corrosion hasn't helped or the tests have shown the battery in your car is weak and worn, there is nothing else to do than replace it. The price of the new battery can vary greatly depending on two factors type and capacity. Older vehicles mostly use a conventional, wet cell type with acid and distilled water filling its internals. Newer cars, especially if they have a start-stop system, use so-called AGM batteries, which are far more expensive. Another thing is the capacity, which shows how much ampere hours the battery holds. This has to match your car's needs. As you may imagine, the higher the number is, the more expensive the battery. All in all, you can spend anywhere between 50 bucks for a small wet cell battery and well over $300 for an AGM with a large capacity. Also, if paying a mechanic to do the replacement, don't forget to factor in the labor costs. This could be expensive if the battery is buried somewhere deep, making replacement difficult and time consuming. So, there you have it viewers, this is how you can check and test the battery in your car at home and determine its condition. I hope this video was helpful and if so, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. But if not, and your car still has battery problems, you might be facing a more severe issue. So to continue troubleshooting, check out other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com for more detailed automotive repair guides. Bye.